Okay, so my part's the easy part. I'm just going to go over right quick a bunch of the, the processes and some definitions and stuff, and then later where you guys present, we're going to go over the different, you know, alcohol poisonings, methanol, isopropyl, plants, food, whatever the different poisons are, okay? So accidental or intention, intentional, uh, accidental falls a lot with pediatrics, babies, kids, little booger eaters, they explore with their mouth. So you have that toddler that's crawling across or just may begin to walk. When they see something on the floor, uh, they're gonna pick it up and stick it in their mouth, okay? Or they open the cabinet and they're gonna look at something and pick it up and stick it in their mouth, especially if it's bright and colored, a lot of colors to it, they think it's candy, okay? Other things that you have, intentional drug overdoses, uh, a lot of those take place. A lot of people take, uh, try to overdose with medications, over-the-counter medications, and then, of course, you're gonna have the, the drunks, right? That they drink too much, way too much, and you have alcohol toxicity, perhaps. Uh, the big thing with these, these two here, if that, is that scene safe? Is it safe to be there? The dispatcher will take the information down and if they suspect oh this patient's intoxicated or they say anything about overdosing then they're going to get 5-0 out there first okay and uh, make sure that the scene is safe you won't go into a, a house where there's somebody that's drank 5,000 beers and they think he's you know overdosed on alcohol they're going to have the police go in there and make sure that the scene is safe first for you any really any even if it's accidental my my experience has been you have an 85 year old male patient who you know took too many uh, pills whatever type of pills right they're still going to send the police out there uh, to make sure that that scene is safe even though you think you can take the 85 year old right so they're, they're going to probably send somebody out there clear the scene first and then let you in Okay, and we know this through life. You know what a poison is, right? It, it's going to impair your health or cause death. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of the accidental poisonings involve young children, just like we said, they, they explore with their mouth, right? Okay, uh, suicide, homicide, uh, you know, the wife's tired of the husband, starts to put eye drops in his coffee. Mm. You know, starts to throw poison. Uh, insulin is a big thing that they use to uh, for a homicide. You jack someone up with a swing full of insulin, they're not coming back. <laughs> okay. Uh, suicides is always their attempted suicide. Uh, we we talk about this later. I think as far as the overdoses and suicides a little bit. Someone, in, in my experience anyway, someone that is dead set on suicide is going to do it. That patient is going to do that, and then you're going to uh, show up on the aftermath of it. Okay, uh, attempted suicides is the ones that they're not really serious about it, uh, and they take a lot, of, a lot of pills or something like that, but uh, then they call somebody and say, yeah, I just, or now they put it on Snapchat or something. Hey, oh, I just took 5,000 pills, you know, and then you then you go out to the house. They're, they're not really intentional, too intentional with that. The person that is intentional is going to do it, and there's nothing, I mean, very little sometimes that you, you can do about it. You're, you're sitting there, and they're already in cardiac arrest. We had this one lady, she was discharged from the hospital because she overdosed on Valium. Sitting beside her dead body uh, in her bedroom was the discharge instructions from the hospital. It says, stop taking Valium. I mean, I'm serious. That's why I said stop taking Valium in the discharge instructions. So what had happened was she overdosed in, when somebody was at her house, and they found her and then took her to the hospital. When they discharged her, she waited until everybody was gone to work, and then she took more Valium. I guess, okay, and then 
6, 7 o'clock at night when everybody came home, they we, they found her then and called 911, but it was too late. So she was very intentional on that. Uh, anyway, it's just sort of back and forth. I mean, that's just been my experience with it, that when you deal with suicide, the ones that are really serious, they're, they're going to do it right away. And that's just not young people, that's old people as well. Uh, so... Anyhow, overdose on drugs or medication. Sometimes this is uh, this is a deal where uh, Granny accidentally takes too much of her pain medicine, or accidentally takes too much medicine. Okay, happens all the time. Uh, another or intentional is Tylenol. A lot of people don't think about Tylenol, but Tylenol has a toxic dose to it, and uh, and a lot of the code medicines is three to five hundred milligrams of Tylenol. So the person that is not in really intentional on suicide, they take a bunch of code medicine, a bunch of pills, okay? And they go to the hospital, they dissolve whatever the problem was, okay? But now they're in liver failure because they've taken too much Tylenol. So the, uh, the, the, su the attempted suicide is way over with, but now they're in liver failure because of the overdose and the over-the-counter medicines or other medication uh, so that is something as as well you look at there's different routes obviously this is what you guys are studying right ingestion is very the sort of the popular one you know I'm going to eat it uh, accidental intentional I'm going to swallow that you have people swallowing trying to swallow all different types of things Drano you know, the, the, the stuff that you pour in your drain to clear up the, you know, because when you wash your hair, because you have guys have hair, it gets in the drain, right? And then you pour drain on there when it clogs up to eat away the hair that's in the drain and let it flow through instead of calling a plumber, correct? People drink Drano, if they're really intentional on it, it's going to kill them because they drink Drano. Think about your esophagus, okay? It's just going to eat it away. If, if, if they can swallow it, it's very caustic like bleach. It's very hard to swallow bleach because it burns so much and it, it's caustic. Your, your stomach just won't, it get there and you're just going to spell it right back up. Your stomach won't, won't take it. Okay. So you do have that with in, ingestion, rat poisons. Kids get into rat poison all the time. You put it out behind there to kill, kill the mice and they, they pick it up export them out. Huffers, inhalation, I have no idea why anybody would inhale paint fumes or uh, isopropyl alcohol or uh, this is this is why you have to be 18 now to buy paint. Right? You have to present an idea to buy spray spray paint. Uh, whiteout, the same thing. Okay. So you see these guys that huff this, breathe this in. They don't, if they have a chronic use of it, they don't have a brain cell left in their head. These are the guys who can't, they have to sort of think with tighter shoes. You know, the ones you sort of see on TV that they act really stupid because they are, they don't have any brain cells left. It kills all those neural fibers in there and they can't, uh, they can't think past the next huff, right? In injection, like a needle, uh, cocaine overdose, heroin overdose. Heroin's a big popular one. We sell, they, uh, CVS sells uh, Narcan now, right? For, for those type of overdoses. Some that are really more, uh, and, and this gets into you as well as uh, rattlesnakes, animal life, right? Okay, absorption. Uh, you get dry powder on your skin or something on your skin which don't absorb through your skin. So when we look at these, indigestion, poison by indigestion is somewhat slow in onset. It takes a little time. If it's going to stay in your GI tract, uh, it's going to take some a little time to absorb. This is where you would use your activated charcoal if, if you did, okay? I've never given activated charcoal, but uh, in, in a pre-hospital setting, inhalation is going to be very quick onset 
it gets into the lungs and then it diffuses into the, the pulmonary system and then the heart pumps it out to the rest of the body. Injections just like IV, that's gonna that's gonna be very quick and onset as well. You're gonna get a very quick uh, signs and symptoms. And then absorption is somewhat slow because it has to absorb through the skin. It's it's gonna be sort of a slow uh, process. Whoops. So there's oh my it's drinking. Uh, what? Uh, no, man. Lamp oil. What is that? That's uh, a kerosene. Kerosene. Yeah. But but let me tell you, she wouldn't get it all over her face like that because the fact is you you can't keep kerosene down. It's gonna burn the snot out of your mouth. These who has hydrocarbons? Yeah. It's gonna burn really bad. If you do get it in your mouth, uh, like these little kiddos, unless you're intentionally trying to swallow that, these kiddos, are, that's going to hit their mouth and they're going to spit it right back out because uh, it's going to burn so bad. All right. Now they could get burns, I think there's a picture later, they could get burns around their face, okay, from the soft tissue, from this hydrocarbon, burning them like with bleach and everything. But uh, anyway, let no, I guess that's a possibility. Of course, those are old. That's who has those things anymore, right? But you, you have to keep things put up. Inhalation is huffer. Uh, there's, they will breathe in any anything that gives them a, apparently a pretty good high. It's short, depending on what they're inhaling, right? But it tears the whole respiratory system up in the the neurological system. Uh, do y'all guys know anybody that's huffed like that for a period of time? Uh, no. no. They're, they're probably the guy that, the, the person that sits in class and eats their boogers because they just don't know any different. You know, I mean, it just destroys their whole mental process uh, when they do that. These guys, see, you know, if it's paint, you're going to see the paint around their face and stuff. And or, or whatever it was, uh, they they huff anything that has a hydrocarbon in it. Apparently, it gives a pr pretty good high. Uh, like gasoline and stuff. I mean, how can you breathe in gasoline? Uh, yeah. Injection, the druggy. Uh, this is where your Narcan would come in effect if it's an opioid, right? Uh, <coughs> they inject a lot of things. Heroin. It's a big thing people inject, I mean, inject heroin, but heroin, uh, you're sort of on this, this ladder, really, people who take, inject heroin or use heroin because you don't really know between dose and dose of which one's gonna kill you. I mean, it could be the first time. There was a group of students, it's been a while now, but there's been a group of students in Plano that shot up heroin, black tar heroin, oh. and it killed them. Every one of them. So they they overdosed on it first time. You know, so the uh, we see a lot of heroin overdoses as well. There are some, several that came in last year. They you note them that they're the younger person in cardiac arrest. You know, these opioids or heroin or cocaine or something. Uh, cocaine's a little different because it just races the heart away, but. Uh, Heroin, morphine, these different uh, drugs that shoot up like this, it knocks the respiratory drive out. So they stop breathing, which I guess it's, you have to get a cause of death. That's the heart stopping. Uh, you I know, I never hear anyone like inject cocaine. Crack cocaine, they, they boil it. Not that I have personal experience with it. <laughs> but you get the little spoon, yeah. you heat it up. You know, if you if you're a TV person, they heat it up with a lighter, it turns liquid. You draw it up and you inject it. I've never heard someone like take it that way though. Watch some more TV, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. Exorption. This happens to be lime. There's lime on the roads. They they actually put it. You know, when they're redoing a road, they put lime in the dirt uh, to harden it up, make a harder substance. With a dry powder or something of this nature here, well, actually with all of them, 
you want to see what they if they were poisoned or overdosed whether intentional accidental you want to make sure that you you know what what the substance is try your best to find out what that is so there's an antidote to it right now like narcan they'll give narcan just to off signs and symptoms right it's a juice it's it's harmless uh, otherwise it's water if it's not an opioid you give narcan it, it won't do any thing at all. I could take Narcan right now and it wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. Wolf couldn't. He's not. So, but uh, anyhow, the lime, the powder, okay, uh, you need to make sure you know what that is because some of these powders activate with water. So our normal instinct is to, oh, I got all this stuff on them. Let me pour some sterile water on there and rinse that powder off, right? That's why it's important to know what the powder is. Because they're saying, you know, this really burns. Ah, you know, it's got a tingle to it. Uh, and then you put water on it, and then it really burns. Okay? Then it starts to burn. And it's going to burn until it runs out of oxygen. So the uh, make sure that you know what the substance is. So this dry lime, we would just rub we would scrape as much of it off as possible, figure out what the substance is before we, we did anything, right? And almost all of the, all of these, all the overdoses uh, call poison control. Because you pick this patient up or have dispatch actually call poison control, what I would do. And then they say, okay, they, I have a lime powder all over my patient call poison control to find out what to do with that you know or maybe I have X chemical that's that has got onto the patient what what do I need to do poison control will tell you uh, there's a 1-800 number that they call if you didn't call them then when you got to the ED they would call poison control and say what's the treatment to make sure that we're doing the right treatment so always think about call, at least having dispatch call poison control to know what to do with the, uh, the, the, the stuff that's on the patient. I got, uh, Bill, we put this pool together. It's a nightmare. I could write a book about it, <laughs> above ground pool. Anyway, we got it, water was in there. I was super psyched about going swimming in it, you know. It's like, woohoo, time to swim. I'm gonna put some chemicals in it. My friend told me to put this certain type of chemical in it, and it says, do not, Get them skin. Contact the skin. I'm like, yeah, they all say that. And as I was pouring the chemical in there, it splashed up on this thumb, my right thumb. I remember because it's the one I beat with. The the right thumb. And man, that started burning. I mean, like, oh wow, that's hot. And it, then it started crusting up on my thumb and sort of hand and arm that was on there. I'm like, 8,800 gallons of water. I just poured the chemical in there. I'm gonna put my hand in the water. Oh, whoa, oh, that really burns. How can that burn? I just poured it in the water. How did that burn? So I go in the house, I call the pool supply company. I say, go get the MSDS sheets on this chemical. And of course the guy goes, what? MSDS sheet, material data safety sheet, it's going to tell me how to treat this on this particular chemical. And so they went and got it, and I, he started reading it like, I don't need to know any of that. I just need to know is, is it toxic or corrosive? That's the only thing I need to know. Because I'm sitting there going, okay, flashback to chemistry, flashback to chemistry. This must be an acid base, base soap. So, so I got soap, and I put soap on it to try to get it to burn, stop burning. And then uh, the guy from the pool store said, it's not corrosive, means it's not gonna eat your thumb off, hand off, or it's not, uh, you know, it's not gonna kill you, it's just gonna burn. I'm like, okay, good. So I'm trying to get it off. Long story short, it burned my skin off. It came off, but with my skin. So the, uh, it was, it was some sort of weird chemical 
But the weird thing about that was you could get into the pool. You could pour these chemicals into the pool and get in the pool. You didn't have, there's no wait time. But you didn't want to put the chemical on your, the raw chemical on your skin. Go figure, right? But uh, burn, and I'm thinking, man, I can't even eat. I have this stuff on my hands. I can't get off my hands. But and it's my dominant hand. But so do know what it is. Okay, and poison control is uh, can help you out there. Again, signs and symptoms, how fast it's going to react, how, how fast you're going to see the signs and symptoms is determined by the route and the, that process. All right, so inhalation, you're going to see uh, signs and symptoms very quick, and the patient can crash on you very quickly. They can go from, let's say they drank something, okay? And all of a sudden now, whatever they drank is causing the airway to swell, just like an allergic reaction, right? So this airway starts to swell. So you could go from sitting up there talking, complaining about life, to closed airway really quick. So be cautious of that. And of course, always mental status, ABC, right? Always watch that airway because that can change at any point in time. For us, e EMT-wise, BLS-wise, overdoses are primarily you just support it, okay? So you, you have supportive care. You support the uh, airway. You do, no matter which type of route or poison it is, always do a good assessment, always do good ABCs, good physical exam, sample, OPQRST, find out as much as you can about the, the substance, okay? Bring the substance with you if possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but at least try to bring the name of it with you, okay? Uh, if it's in, uh, ingestion, be vomiting. Be prepared for that. Vomiting's an airway concern, right? We really don't want the patient to vomit that stuff back up. Uh, that was old school a long time ago that they wanted the patient to vomit. You know, they drank something or ate something, wanted to vomit back up. Now it's more caustic coming back up. It's more damaging coming back up. So they don't recommend that you induce vomiting anymore. They haven't done that in how long? Y'all looked at this, right? I mean, on your poisonings, they don't, nobody can induce vomiting, right? Yeah, you don't want to. Right? And then reassess every five minutes at least, okay? Uh, with, with different things you want to, like an absorption or inhalation or uh, an oral, you just want to slow down, you want to try to slow down the absorption fat process if, if you can. A lot of it, but what we do, we treat signs and symptoms always. On all these medical emergencies we've been talking about, we treat the signs and symptoms. We have signs and symptoms and we treat those signs and symptoms appropriately, right? So it, it's, what do you call the wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, is that the phrase? Yeah. So treat the signs and symptoms, treat the signs and symptoms, right? It, it's much easier because as you know, I mean, what is your, in, in the book there was, I don't know, 14 or 15 different uh, poisons and stuff that we're gonna look at or type of overdoses that we're gonna look at, right? So there's no way to know all those signs and symptoms. Oh, this is methanol or this is food poisoning, or this is, you know, a plant. Just keep in mind the signs and symptoms and treat what you see, okay, or what the patient's telling you. And then, hey, what, what did you eat? What did you drink? That sort of thing, right? Over-the-counter medicines, very popular. Uh, household products, especially with kiddos. Uh, the Tide Pods. <coughs> I think they've stopped doing it now, but yeah. the, the crazies that ate the Tide Pods, why? Why would anybody eat Tide? 
Really? You, you have a college education and you're eating a Tide Pod? Right? Okay, but it looks good to a kid, though. That's the problem with them. What are they, orange and white and blue? Yeah. You find that on the ground, you're a kid, you look in there and go, man, that's a big piece of candy. You know? And you chomp down on it. And it's soap, so it's not going to burn that bad. Soaps don't really burn too bad. You know, but the uh, then you have illegal drugs that you are unsure. This is why you want to stay away from illegal drugs, okay? Not only the thought of going to prison over it, but the other reason you want to stay away from illegal drugs is that you don't know what they cut the drug with. And this goes down to pot. I know pot's the new wine, okay? But you don't know what they're cutting the drug with. They're like cocaine. I mean, if you're a drug dealer, their their purpose is to get more more powder out of the, what they have, right? So they start cutting it with like Ajax and different things that are different chemicals that are uh, toxic. And then you then that person in, injects it or snorts it, right? So they don't know what's in in there. What fertilizers did they use? You know, how did they break that down? So there's a lot of unknown things. Uh, just to be on the fair side, if you did illegal drugs, grow your own or make your own. So go Breaking Bad or, you know, or uh, do your own. That way at least you know what's, in, what's inside of it. Correct? Uh, very important. Uh, that, that should scare the, the illegal drugs out of you there. Not knowing exactly what uh, takes place. One time we went to a overdose. This girl just kept shouting. That's all she did was scream. She was having some really good hallucinations, okay? They went to a pill party. They brought mom and dad's pills over and they poured them in a bucket and they mixed them up. And you grab one and you And then you grab one and start taking them. Oh, right? Yeah. That's a little stupid. Because it only takes one bad interaction between medications to, to kill you. You know, forget about the high. This medicine here that Susie poured in may not mix well with what Bob poured in. And you take those two, and then it's death, right? So, anyhow, bad, bad practice, dude. Of course, I mean, they eat Tide. You know, I think they stopped doing that. Right? Yeah, they, they put it stopped. Yeah, that's where it stopped. Uh, other things, foods, spoiled foods, digging in the trash can for food poisoning, right? Eat some bad chicken, eat, eat some bad food. Insecticides are, are harsh. I knew a guy that, an insecticide, he, uh, he bought a sprayer you know, like you spray Roundup with or whatever. And uh, he was cleaning it out. He put the tip, and this was just an accident. He put the tip of the sprayer in his mouth to hold it while he was doing something. He put the tip in his mouth and it caused him to have a reaction. It caused him actually a little stroke. Uh, him to have a little stroke. He wasn't you know, who knows what went through that sprayer, but he took the unclean tip of that sprayer and put it in his mouth, and it, it caused him to have a stroke. Just the absorption through the mucous membrane. So, some guy just won, won like a gazillion dollars, if it's true, uh, over getting cancer from uh, weed killer. The, what's, the, what's the big weed killer? Uh, Roundup, yeah. yeah, it's a little yeah. Uh, carbon monoxide is on here. Since I'm thinking about it, I think I tossed it in there. But carbon monoxide poisoning is, is is popular, okay, because it's painless, it's odorless. You breathe in enough carbon monoxide and you go to sleep. Uh, somebody at Texas Motor Speedway died from carbon monoxide poisoning the other day, if the news was, was fake. Right? Okay, wait. Then just accidental misuse of medications, uh, medications taken with alcohol, you know, 
never take medication with alcohol. One, it decreases the antibiotics. So if you're taking antibiotics, you can't drink while you're on antibiotics. It, it takes away the, the, uh, the effects of the medication, and it takes away the effects of uh, antipsychotic drugs, you know, uh, as well. You can't take alcohol with that. But this, this part down here, let's say you're taking a pain medicine and you want to chase it down with a bourbon or something, it, uh, it affects the breathing. It knocks your respiratory drive out. It was good. Uh, and then there's a little kid, oh, lighter fluid, that tastes pretty good. That, that's deadly. Then you have an ant killer there, so caught a few things, sprays. Did you hear about the guy who, oh, was that a movie? Not as a movie. The guy who had wash spray, and he was gonna spray it, but he had it the wrong way. He sprayed wash spray in his own face, like Raid in his own face. Uh, Raid's a, a neurotoxin. Uh, if, again, if you wanna take out the husband, spray Raid all over their face. They're having, probably having a seat, life threatening seizure and a stroke. Have you ever seen Ray? You know what I'm talking about, Ray? Bug spray? Have you ever sprayed it on a, a roach or a bug and watched it? Oh, it causes the little roach to have a seizure. You spray it on there and the little roach will flip over on its back and have a little roach seizure. Seizure. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, we actually had a roach in here. <laughs> we were going to do it. These are big ones, see. And we made him a roach motel, a little house. And we tried to feed him because we were going to try to get him big so we could spray raid on him. <laughs> but he started stinking too much and we went out and killed him. But uh, we, it was all for science. Wow. Yeah, we built him a little house. That's not for science, that's just being a sadist. Okay, so it was, it was a roach. There was a video somewhere the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'd get in trouble with PETA because it's a roach. But, PETA will attack your brain. Yeah. They wouldn't even let us cut up a frog. <clears throat> Anyhow, so all of your, these are going to be very repetitive here. Okay, so assessment based approach always. And it's always the same thing, all right? Good size up, make sure the scene is safe, good general impression, good primary assessment, good secondary assessment, right? OPQRST sample, get as much history as you can, do a good physical exam, reassess, figure out what's, what they take, when they took it, right? There's a lot of extra questions to ask when, with the poison. When did you take this? Did you take it intentionally? Was it an accident? Were you trying to harm yourself, right? So you ask those type of questions. Remember, if they were trying to harm themselves, then they you treat them under what type of consent? Implied. Implied consent, right. They lose their right, patient rights. Okay, so you would do this. Um, you could put down here, you could, you could scratch out ingested poison and put any medical emergency. You would do the same thing. Oh, okay. These are, you would do the very same thing if that said chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, right? my big toe hurts. You would still do the same thing over and over, okay? So we won't spend a lot of time going through all that again, right? But some of the other history of ingestion, look at the swelling, there's swelling, burning in the mouth, diarrhea, not a sudden onset thing. Do they have altered mental status? Watch the nausea and vomiting. There's the picture of the, the sort of the chemical burn on this uh, kiddo's face. Right. All the bleach. Bleach is the most popular one I've ever been on. The kid gets out of the bleach. They don't swallow the bleach. They get it in their mouth and then boom, they spit it out. Their breath smells like a swimming pool, right? That's the chlorine. So you bend down and you said, you know, breathe out, and it smells like bleach. And you look in their mucous membranes and for burning, look in the back of their throat, 
which swell in for redness, hoarseness, but, uh, but 99% of the time <clears throat> on a kid, they don't spit it right back out unless it's an intentional overdose where they're going to try to drink the drain or try to drink the bleach, okay? Abdominal right. pain, tenderness, burns, stains, unusual breath odors with the bleach, uh, the huffing type thing, respiratory distress, do they have an abnormal heart rate? I mean, all these are basic signs and symptoms that you would look at and you would uh, determine if you could treat that, blood pressure problems, constricted pupils like with the heroin, the opioids, it's going to constrict their pupils, they're going to be really pinpoint like the pencil, cocaine, they're going to be dilated, methamphetamines, they're going to be dilated, all right, or their skin, is, is their skin altered, do, do they have really hot skin, are they warm to the touch for no apparent reason, and be prepared for seizures, okay, and unresponsiveness, okay, I mean, that's, that's going to be something that you're always going to have to wonder is this patient going to become unresponsive with me? So that's that's always a problem. And then with ingested pro uh, poisons, you have activated charcoal. That's one of your medications. Hopefully, eventually, uh, they will take that away because nobody gives it anymore. Okay, 24 years, I've never given activated charcoal. We we had it on the ambulance for some time, and then it would expire and then we throw it away. Get another one, put it back in the ambulance. It would expire, we throw it away. Eventually they just took it out of our protocols. We didn't even give it, we didn't even uh, carry it because nobody gave it. It has to be given in a certain amount of time uh, to absorb, it's, it's a binding agent. The charcoal binds the fragments or the whatever ingested trying to like the pills. It doesn't work on liquid. It won't bind the liquid together, okay? Really, and then right here, there's no evidence really that it helps, okay? It gives the patient terrible constipation. It clogs them up really bad. They poop out black stuff for X amount of time. You gotta give them a really super big laxative to uh, do that, <clears throat> you know, to help them uh, poo. And so hospital-wise, it doesn't do a lot of good either. Uh, I've only seen it given in hospital setting probably even when it was popular, maybe a handful of times. They just don't like to give it. There's other things that they can do. They can do a lavage or to monitor the patient. Depends on what they took, right? Okay, so uh, do you know the dose, the adult dose and the pediatric dose? Uh, if you have this form here, it's probably already mixed with the water. You just sort of shake it up and administer it to the patient. If you administer activated charcoal, be prepared for that patient to vomit unless they're very used to it, taking it, and then they're drinking it like a cocktail. But most patients, they're gonna take activated charcoal and they're gonna spit it out and they're gonna vomit it back up. I mean, it's a briquette with water. So it's, they just won't, they just won't ingest it too well. But do know, because it's still in the National Registry curriculum, uh, the dose, pediatric adult, the uh, class, what it does, side effects, right? Okay. And then they, again, uh, maintain their airway, evaluate the need for oxygen, don't let them hurt themselves anymore, because if they intentionally try to hurt themselves, they may carry on that process somewhat, right? So don't don't allow them to hurt themselves. And then, uh, since it's an unknown in any of these poisons, do a rapid transport, right? Because you don't know how fast that they're going to crash. BLS wise, you don't have a lot of tools to to help you out there. Right? Bring the substance to the hospital. Always contact uh, poison control if if you can. Like say. What I used to do is I used to have dispatch called poison control. They have a little bit more time where they're not having to deal with the patient, right? And they can feed you information uh, on the particular poison.
skin, like we talked about, rapid, rapid absorption of inhalation. Okay, uh, these are the things that we're going to look at uh, that you guys are, are looking at. All right, so we're, we're going to go over these in a bit. Like I said, the carbon monoxide, so much, all, all those cars running around the circle, the uh, they reported some uh, fatality at Texas Motor Speedway from the carbon monoxide uh, poisoning. How is that going to be carbon monoxide, or not other vehicles? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they would. Uh, <laughs> what, what, I, what I would think they would do is everybody else is sort of moving around. But that would be the guy who sat down in the, the drunk who sat down in the seat and just sat there and breathed it all in. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. Good question. I'm gonna have to read about. It. I don't know because there's thousands of people out there, you know. But I, I do think it was more of an emergency. They had to evacuate uh, part of the. I had some friends that yes, some friends that work out there uh, the motor speedway, and I don't know if they had to evacuate part. Because you know, if you have a different pressure system, I think it's a low pressure system, that gas doesn't float up. That that low pressure system will push that gas down into the to the track area. That's speculation. That's that's guessing on what took place. I don't know. But like I said, I don't know about one person. Maybe there was you guys have the engine. Google it. See if you can look it up. See if it actually happened or if it was just fake news. Okay, huffing, you got to be absolutely out of your mind to do that. Remember that uh, that's going to cause a lot, very quick, because it's inhalation, it's going to cause very quick signs and symptoms. Again, do your uh, same assessment based approach as anything. Toxic environment, make sure that you are trained before you enter into a toxic environment. This house fire, okay? See these guys with the SCBA on, self-contained breathing apparatus in the, in the turnout gear to keep from getting torched when they go in, especially the burns. Smoke, just smoke itself. You could walk into the house and collapse a smoke inhalation before you got to the wall. All right, the smoke could be so thick just knock your whole drive out, you, you get smoke inhalation, now you're laying right there in the floor, okay? Uh, that's why we have these special toys, okay? Don't go into a, a fire, uh, a house full of smoke without the proper equipment on. Uh, uh, you'll be another patient. There's very few. I've seen it before. I've seen firemen, volunteer firemen, try to go in the house, uh, with nothing on, they took two steps and turned around and hacking and coughing and coming right back out. And then you sit there and go, really? You know, uh, wait till they get an SCBA on. In that you're trained in that environment. Uh, oxygenate them, right? If, and it probably will, there will be indications for oxygen, you know, respiratory distress, Increased work of breathing, right? Dysmia. So, uh, some some things that are a little different. The strider, you hear this hoarseness in there. The hoarseness in the strider is telling you that it has affected the, the lower airway. All right, so that's a concern as well, especially if it was heat related because of the swelling. The airway could swell shut. So, that's a big problem. And then you get into the burns, look in the back of the throat, they start with all the secretions, headache, dizziness, and the last part, you know, they, they could seize from the inhalation. Some we'll talk about in hazardous material, but some uh, hazardous material will kill you in the parts per billion. So like chlorine gas and different gases, right? You can mix chlorine gas pretty easy. It's it's bleach and ammonia, and you have chlorine gas, okay? It happened uh, with us a couple times with nursing homes. 
been mixing chemicals together. He says, don't mix these together. Don't mix bleach and these other chemicals together. And it creates a gas, okay? But it's, it's lethal. So don't try it at home, okay? Yeah, don't, don't mix cleaning solutions together. And this was just an accident. The cleaning staff trying to get their floor clean and they mixed a couple cleaning solutions together, right? And uh, it created a, a, a gas that was uh, potentially quite dangerous. Other things, nausea, vomiting, and chemicals like we talked about on the face. Um, you know, if it's a, it's a fire or something of that nature, you'll see the soot, the black soot around their mouth and their, and their nose and stuff. Those are all good indications that you could have an airway concern. And then again, like we talked about, a wait for the specialized rescue team. Someone could be in there and there's this gas in there, wait, wait for that. If you suspect carbon monoxide, like the TVs always have, they, you know, they're in the garage and they put the hose in the tailpipe and in the thing they fill the room up with carbon monoxide. You can open the door, right? And ventilate the, the door and, and let the gas vent, ventilate out if, if you know what it is, okay? If you're not sure what the gas is, then don't ventilate it towards you, right? Uh, but, you know, they car running in a garage, carbon monoxide poisoning, open the, open the door, right? Let it ventilate out, go get the patient. You're not going to drop dead. Really, it's not a quick onset, okay? <clears throat> But if you go in there and you start having trouble breathing, then hey, get out, right? Leave the, leave the person in there until someone uh, comes out. And then, do get the patient out of the environment, oxygenate them, uh, bag valve mask, make sure that, again, what, what substance was it? They can't really effectively treat the patient if they don't know the substance. They don't know what it is, right? They can guess, but uh, try to try to bring that information with you. Snake bites is injection, uh, like we talked about heroin, cocaine, the different drugs that form injection. Thanks, thanks to MythBusters, I know that not every rattlesnake bite is actually injects. You know, if the snake goes over there and eats, injects a little rabbit for, for, for lunch, right, and kills the little rabbit, it may not have any venom left in their, uh, their fangs. It takes some time to reproduce that. You know, we would treat it like it was an injection, especially if you had two marks, right? But we would treat it like it was an injection of the rattlesnake, but a lot of them don't have venom left in their their fangs? Yeah. fangs, yeah. Okay. Uh, animal bites, insect bites, intentional drugs, just be aware, look at it. Uh, sometimes it's just local reaction, systemic, it could affect the whole system, right? Systemic, it could affect the blood pressure, heart rate, uh, respiratory rate, and then different, like we just talked about a while back, Insects can cause an anaphylactic reaction. Okay, same same approach. Size up. Do a good physical exam. Good head to toe. Uh, good patient assessment. Same sort of uh, signs and symptoms. This euphoria. You know, use it. The heroin's don't give you that. Recreational drugs don't give you that euphoria. Hey, I feel really good. Uh, be aware of the hallucinations. Things can get out of hand really quick with patient having hallucinations because you don't know what they think that you look like. You know, uh, this this lady that was screaming her head off. I don't. You know, I'm not very photogenic anyway, right? But uh, I don't have any idea what she thought I was thought I was, but she screamed for 15 minutes. Uh, I don't know, whatever I was, I was scaring the crap out of her, okay? Anyway, uh, do look, 
like we talked about needle tracks, find some sort of uh, clue, even if it's a, a snake bite, the injection site, that could be very painful, swelling, pupils change like we, like we spoke of, right? And then they could have a, a sedative sort of effect to it as well. Paralysis, swe swelling, all that at, at the injection site. So really, for a lot of these poisons, you have to be almost ready for anything, right? You know, it, a lot of it's unknown. So keep a keep a track of those signs and symptoms, and just be just be ready. Always protect yourself. Protect the airway. Be be super super uh, cautious and proactive. Looking at the airway. Make sure their airway doesn't uh, close up or they stop breathing. And then the same way with absorbed poisons through the skin, the mucous membranes. Again, localized reactions. So you just have this big alert sort of redness to the skin where it could be systemic. You could have blood pressure problems, heart rate problems, right? As always, steer your good patient assessment. Uh, head to toe, sample, open QRST, reassess every five minutes. Good, good set of baseline vital signs. Time of exposure, you know, uh, burn skins. You, sometimes you do have to, you might have to treat the patient for burns that may cause first, second degree burns. Some of that stuff. Uh, is it, is it like from a, uh, plant, uh, contact with the plant instantly, you, you have a localized reaction to it, ooh, oozing blisters, mm, no thanks, but uh, if it does form a blister, keep the blister intact, okay. and then you want to protect yourself, like you have this substance that's on there, you don't want to really come in contact, so not only gloves, but you have to think about your arms and, and everything else, your face, right? especially if it's a powder. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So they may have to, again, we'll get to this point in uh, hazardous material, but they may have to be decontaminated. You may have to call a hazmat team out there and decontaminate the patient, uh, where they wash them down in the tubs and scrub them. So, but definitely try to remove them from the source always and forever protect the airway and con continuously reassess the patient. And then the picture of this, they're sort of sweeping whatever this is off of the, this guy trying to get the bulk of it off. Me, I would probably have a respirator on. I don't want to breathe in that powder, okay? Just depending on, on what it is. It says here, calcium hydroxide standard hydrated lime yeah lime I would have a respirator on okay. I don't want to be breathing that stuff in because you breathe in the powder right so you, you want to be very cautious with that if it gets in the eye remember this at least 20 minutes okay then you would flush the eye for 20 minutes that's sort of the standard top test question okay uh, if they got something in the eye, uh, realistically, I would flush it the whole transport time. I just keep flushing it out. Right? Uh, but 20 minutes is the catch-all for the for the test type questions. Okay, this is where it picks up with you guys. So uh, after break, we we'll start presenting. Do you have any questions before we start presenting the different? We're at food poisonings and met methanol and hydrocarbons and I mean there's a list of those in there. Did you want to say so if you use the book for some of the information you do want to say like where we got it from? That'd be helpful. Just sort of get that in there. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll take a break.